Unity of Houston is an inclusive church where we seek to understand and live the teachings of Jesus and other spiritual masters. At Unity, we welcome all people from all spiritual paths and every walk of life. We celebrate the diversity of our city and of our world, and we teach love, tolerance, and oneness, seeking to live in harmony with open minds and open hearts. Wherever you are in your spiritual path, you are always welcome at Unity. Join us and discover that the life of your dreams you, is already within you. So it touches what, about the openness that we're going to be looking at tonight. So my message tonight is called A Willingness to Ask, and I thought I would start with some question and answer jokes, if that's okay with you, just for fun. <laughs> what did the green grape say to the purple grape? Ah, breathe, breathe! <laughs> right? What did... What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Same middle name. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> what did the left eye say to the right eye? Between you and me, something smells. <laughs> okay. A couple more. Uh, how does NASA organize a party? They plan it. Plan it. This one's my favorite one, okay? This is the last one, I promise, I promise. What is a pirate's favorite letter? You think it's R, but it's B the C. Thank you for loving me through that. That was just fun for me. It has nothing to do with the talk, <laughs> except the question and answer part. So this is the next part of our Taking Our Next Step series. So I thought about what's important on our spiritual path that we need to know, that we need to take action on as we're moving forward on our dream, our vision, our goals. And so what I recognize that was a really important step for me throughout my path and continues to be is my openness, my willingness to ask for support, for guidance, for help, for connection throughout, throughout that. And, and, how, and the challenge of that, that it wasn't always easy to do that. So it was me stepping out of my comfort zone to be able to do that and wanting to encourage you that the bigger the dream that you have, the more collaboration and support you're going to need to ask for from others, right? And, you know, you can, you can dream it all in your mind and see it bigger. The, more, the bigger it is, the more people it's going to impact, the more support you're going to need to have that happen. So we're called upon to step out of our comfort zone and to ask others for collaboration and support. So now I have a few questions to ask you on the topic of being willing to ask. How willing are you to ask for support and collaboration in manifesting the dream, the vision for your life. Check in with yourself, how willing am I? So first, let's talk about willingness, the power of will. The power of will is one of our divine faculties. And so what is it, what is will? Our Unity Dictionary, The Revealing Word, it's a metaphysical dictionary, and it says that will is the executive faculty of the mind, the determining factor in humankind. So will is that power within us to choose, to say yes or no to opportunities. Are you willing to say yes to the opportunities that are calling you on your dream and your path? Are you willing to say no to the ones that you don't want to show up in your life anymore? That's important to stand in, in your ground on that. Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's applying your power of will. So it's the decision-making, directing, choosing, and determining faculty of the mind. The highest expression of human will is willingness. So what's willingness? I think of willingness as being open, as being vulnerable, as being authentic, available. And what's the opposite polarity of that? That willingness, 
I think of it as willfulness, as stubbornness, like just keeping things status quo the way they always are because that makes me comfortable where I am. But willfulness can get us stuck in a life that we don't want, right? We we recognize we are, as human beings, we are evolving, right? That's the nature of humanity as you look at the evolution of us. We are evolving, creation evolves, and so we want to be open to that evolution. We can get stuck in uh, old ways of being, stuck in thinking that we have to figure it all out all by ourselves. We can get stuck when we just don't believe enough in ourselves or trust our own guidance to trust our dream. So willingness opens us up to possibilities and potentials. 20th century philosopher Eric Hoffer observed, in times of change, learners inherit the earth while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. (laughs) You think about that? When you just stay with what you know, you're equipped for what was. And we want to be equipped for creating and moving into the future. And that is being willing to ask, being open, being vulnerable. We want to step into a new life. We want to create newness in our life. The key is to understand that we don't have to have all the answers. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Because as a collective, we support each other in moving forward. But we do need to be willing to keep asking questions. We need to be willing to reach out beyond ourselves, to be willing to experience the world in a new way. As you notice, if you've been coming on Wednesday nights, Reverend Karen and I have been creating newness on Wednesday. We have been open to possibilities. We have added food trucks. We have had meditation time before the service. We have spiritual talk back. And we recognize that that as fun as it is for us to implement the things we like, it's important for us to get your feedback. And that's why we had the survey last week, uh, the last two weeks. Thank you so much. We had wonderful response. And it's very helpful to us to know the stuff that you wrote. No. You know? (laughs) We're going to probably not do that stuff. And the stuff that you're like, yes, more, more, more. It's like, we're going to schedule that and make sure that happens because we recognize that it's not just us up here having fun doing the service. It's really about all of us as a collective and meeting our needs and our our preferences. And so that's part of us reaching out beyond ourselves, asking questions, seeking guidance, and um, being open to possibilities. And our church is doing that as a, as a collective. If you were here on Sunday, you heard the announcement that we are having a church-wide survey. So uh, if you're watching us or, or any, of, any of you here, go to our website right there on the homepage is a link and take that survey and let us know what you're seeing in the church, what you love, what you would like to see. We're, it's really important because we're recognizing that in moving forward into the future, we've got to keep asking questions, we've got to be open and flexible, and, um, and, and it's exciting to be part of a community that's doing that, right? It's just, you just feel the energy of that uh, happening here. And Michael keeps saying, something is happening here. It really is. It really is. And we're, we're just, just so much um, wonderful openness to the potential that we have here. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So in this willingness, what I see is that it's essential that we have humility, that we have that meekness, that humility in recognizing that we can approach life as a beginner, that yes, we have knowledge and experience, and to be open to what's new, there's a humility and there's a recognition that, um, that we need to reach out to others for support, to create the whole picture, right? My, um, my spiritual teacher, Reverend Robert Brumman, who's going to be here, this is what he said. The world sees not knowing as a problem. Wisdom sees not knowing as an opportunity. Not knowing as an opportunity. Can you imagine that? So many people that I've connected with who something happens in their life where a career ends or a relationship ends and it 
And it's like, wow, I feel like my life is over, and I have no idea what's next. Or it's just, and to think that that's an opportunity. Wisdom says that's an opportunity to create anew. We want to keep going, growing in the direction of opportunity. Author Wendell Berry wrote, it may be that when we no longer know what to do, we have come to our real work. And when we no longer know which way to go, we have begun our real journey. Our real journey. Isn't that awesome? I love that. Opening up to our real journey. So my second question for you tonight is, what's keeping you from reaching out to others for support? Is there something that's keeping you from reaching out to others for support on your spiritual path, on your vision, and your dream? Sometimes I talk to some of my students, some, and, and they're wonderful. I love when people uh, share, they ask questions, they're open, and sometimes students are reluctant and they hold back, and I get to talk to them, and they're like, oh, you know, I just wasn't ready to share or whatever. What, what is it? What is it that's holding you back or holding us back? I recognize for me on my path that what held me back a lot is fear, fear, fear of judgment. Fear that when I share my dream with someone, they're going to say, you? What? No, and I, my dream was I was a professional actor, a performer, singer, actor, dancer, and I wanted to be a minister. I didn't look like a minister, <laughs> any minister that I knew when I, I was raised Catholic. So my family, their point of reference is a priest, a male, old, white, guy, usually, you know, a priest. So I was like, you want to be a, a what? Like where? Doing what? what kind of weird church is going to have you as a minister? So that's, that's the thought, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> that, that's in my, that's whole, it's like, you know, that hesitation to share. And so it's recognizing, well, what, what is that? What's, what's keeping me from um, reaching out for support? Have I judged my, prejudged myself? Have I prejudged others' responses? Maybe their response wouldn't be like that. In fact, it wasn't actually very, it was very accepting and, and not, non, not judgmental about it. <laughs> I never got really that, it was kind of like, hmm, that's interesting, but not, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't negative or anything, but, but it's just, we have our own inner world, right? And we can build up arguments and, and what we think. So we're recognizing what's keeping us from reaching out to others. Is it real? <laughs> Is it real? Is it something you've imagined? Um, we, have, we can tend to have a fear of change or fear of, well, how, if I'm not that person, how am I going to be in relationship with, with uh, people who know me as that? Fear, uh, a desire for safety, where it's comfortable for, for us, our comfort zone, and, um, and what's it going to look like to step out of that, taking a step of action in asking. When I was an actor, there was a mantra that I had that really worked for me, and, and I keep, I, I use it a lot now too. It was feel the fear and do it anyway. Because that's when, as an, as an actor, you audition a lot, so there's a lot of fear. Feel the fear and do it anyway. It, and really, for me, that's like kind of like a denial and an affirmation because it's I'm not giving it any power. I feel it. I feel it. Okay. I don't need to, to act on that. I'm going to act in my power, my truth, and what I really want to activate in my life. And the thing is, is that nobody can do it for you. Nobody can step out on your dream for you. Nobody can ask the questions that you need to ask or know who you need to connect with. You really know that in yourself. There comes a point in our lives where we, you know, we want, we might want a dream, but it really feels good to be like where you are, and you know, maybe you have a stable job with benefits, whatever it is that's, that you're like, ah, oh, stay here. And that we get to a point where that becomes too uncomfortable <laughs> to stay in that old life. And that discomfort uh, becomes more painful than stepping out, than the thought of stepping out and into the new thing. That safety becomes less desirable and the newness becomes more desirable. Our souls recognize that we need growth. And so we become willing to reach out. And so the third question I have for you is, how do you know who to ask for support for your dream? How do you know who to ask? How do you know? 
It's important for us to know that inherent in every dream and every vision that we have for our lives is the means to do it. And so, so we know that the means is there, and we recognize that the support is already present, so how do we open our eyes to see it? I always begin by turning to God as the source of our infinite supply. We turn to God as the source, recognizing that, and ask. Ask for guidance, being open to that guidance. Are you willing to ask God for help with your dream? Or do you feel like you have to do it all on your own? Or I could find it all on the internet. <laughs> you can find it all on the internet. Opening up to the divine. When I answered my call to ministry, I did not see the whole road ahead of me. I, I had no clue. I only knew the next step, the next step, the next step. And that's often the way that it is on our journey. That's the exciting thing. We're, we move we move by guidance, and, um, and we don't need to know every step ahead because we just need to live for, for what's ahead of us to do. Our guidance is always available to us, and it may require us to let go of those old ways, those old fears and habits, and really listen, really be present to listen to spirit within. So my first step in my call to ministry was to ask to be willing to ask, and I had to ask my minister for, um, to let him know I want to be a minister, and you know, what do I do? And so I was, there was fear there, and I think that when we have, or what I know is that when we have a dream, and we know that it is from spirit, and it's divinely guided, that there was this power that welled up in me that I was like, where did that come from, that I had the courage to, stay, to get, step forward and say to him, I want to be a minister. And so uh, I had the willingness to ask, and his support came easily. He said, well, these are the classes you need to take, and go ahead and take my class and sign up for this, and this is what you need to do. And so even though I was nervous, I had fear, I asked him anyway, my faith in, in God, my faith in my dream overrode the fear. And so I know that for you too, that when you know that spirit is guiding you into the person to go forward, to ask for the advice, the guidance, to know that your faith is going to see you through that. On the way, I met many allies to, that supported me on my journey. I happened to be going through my training with other people who were leaders in my church who were taking classes and going to Unity Village, and so we were going out together and taking classes, and we were bonding and connecting over that. We started... A, um, uh, it was a quest fellowship class before service where we were studying the quest and we were each taking turns leading it and so we were growing our teaching skills and connecting with each other. And so we want to look for allies to be supportive of our dreams to, who, are, who are on a similar path to join with us. In our adult Sunday school here, we are studying... The Wizard of Us, which is by Jean Houston. Anybody who's taking that, who's been going to that? Oh, great, great, awesome. Yeah, Jean Houston was here. I was so inspired by her. I've started reading the book, and I, I've really been enjoying it about the hero's journey that Dorothy takes to the land of Oz and how it parallels our own hero's journey. And Dorothy knew when she landed in this in Oz, it was a strange land, and that she had to ask for help. She had to ask for help, and the first person who showed up to help her was Glinda, right? Remember Glinda, the good witch? I'm trying to imitate her, but I'm like, hi, Glinda. But anyway, no. Um, so, <laughs> no. Uh, Glinda, and Glinda represents for us what, what Jean Houston calls our, the IntelliKey or the, our divine potential, our Christ nature, our divine nature that is always present. That when we have a dream, when I heard my calling to ministry, I knew that um, the spirit within me was going to be my teacher. It, that was revealed to me. And, um, and so I, I believe that that is... Um, true of all of us, that spirit within is our greatest teacher and guide and shows up when that dream shows up and says, I'm here to support you, and then continues to support us along the way. 
really our own wholeness that we are. So there's that paradox I talked about when I talked about healing and revealing of that we are already whole and perfect in the divine and we're on a journey of realizing our wholeness through our humanity. So along the yellow brick road for Dorothy, she made some friends. She picked up some allies. She had some unusual suspects, right? The scarecrow, the tin man, and the lion. And she discovered that the support that she needed in this unusual place on this new road of growth and uh, unfolding was, was present for her when she asked for their help, when she looked past the appearances of what she saw and saw their, their heart and their spirit. So how did Dorothy know that they were safe to trust? These friends were, were safe to be trusted. Well, she had to use her intuition that's what we need to do when we're wondering, well, who do I trust with my question or my dream or who, who I connect with? Following our guidance. She could sense the kindness and the sincerity in the Tin Man and the Lion and the Scarecrow. And you feel that when you watch the film, right? They're just good guys, right? She, they also needed her support in their dream, and so they became a team. And think about becoming a team and my dream and... The first time I shared my dream of being a minister with people who weren't like other ministers and other people taking, taking uh, you know, on the road to that was I took a prosperity class a few months after I heard my call to ministry, and we had a prayer group afterwards, and we shared our affirmations together for our dreams, and these are, were people who maybe I wouldn't normally hang with, you know, <laughs> there were people of different ages and gender and ethnicity, all a very, very group. And, uh, and we all grew together and connected through sharing of our dream and our affirmations. And it was a 12-week process. And those prayers that were said in that sacred group continue, I continue to feel the power of that because I see my life manifested uh, what we were praying for those years back when I first heard the call. That power of that team and that, that support made such a difference for me because I got to hear my dream spoken to me in prayer from others uh, who were in my spiritual community. And uh, I, I hold them still in, in my heart. It's, I'm just grateful for that experience. And so we create those experiences here at Unity. There are so many opportunities. Uh, when you take a class, you, may, you will more light and likely meet people who are not ordinarily in your circle. Maybe you wouldn't ordinarily hang with, right? But they have something, to, uh, something that they can share with you, something you can learn from. Uh, we learn from each other. And when we approach the world, seeing everyone as our teacher, then we become open to greater possibilities and seeing the potential for each other. Now, while it's important to be willing to ask, it's also important to keep your dreams sacred, right? Jesus said, don't cast your pearls before swine, <laughs> right? You recognize that Dorothy didn't go to the Wicked Witch and the Flying Monkeys for help, right? She recognized that these were not people to share her dream of going back home with. They were not going to be her support team. So we want to keep our dream holy. And you want to stay positive. If you have naysayers in your life, you know every time you go to them, they, they tell you all the, all the potential downfalls of everything that, that you're planning to do. You just don't want to waste your energy trying to convince them of your dream. The only approval, really, that you need is, well, God's, but you always have God's, so that's done, and your own. So do you approve of your dream? Do you approve of yourself? That's work that is ours to do, is recognizing that if I'm hesitant on it, am I, am I giving myself my own approval? Am I being my own best friend? Um, you can be that for yourself. Stay positive and know that God, you have God support no matter what. So my last question for you is, are you willing to ask for prayer support? That was a big thing for me, that I, 
I, I did call Silent Unity, all from like when I first started going to Unity, but to actually go up to a prayer chaplain and ask for prayer, I admit, this is when I started doing it. I applied to be a prayer chaplain at my church, and I was interviewed, and they said, have you ever prayed with a prayer chaplain here before? I was like, no. <laughs> like, you know, you might want to do that before you come and get trained to do because I knew I wanted to be a minister. I was going to pray with people and that kind of thing. And I know I prayed with something, but I hadn't actually prayed because it just, there was something about that it felt big, you know, it felt vulnerable. It felt, ah, the, you know, what's it going to be like? I didn't know. And, and it was amazing. It was so awesome to get to pray with someone in my community who is holding the truth for me about my vision and, and what I'd like to see in my life. So it really was uh, no biggie. Is actually a, a, a biggie as far as my consciousness really shifting my consciousness and holding that space for me. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. So, um, so he taught us how important it is for us to connect together in prayer. So I dare you to reach out for prayer in our community, to pray with a unity friend tonight, to come to our spiritual talk back and give your prayer request, to go to sign up in our office for spiritual counseling. We have that available five days a week. To call Silent Unity any hour of the day. They're 24-7, and they're happy to pray with you on about any topic. They're amazing. I'm grateful to work in an environment that's centered in prayer, that I know that I have that support. I want that for everybody. And so if you don't have that where you work, you can get that through calling Silent Unity, through connecting with your spiritual community here that's always, always here for you. Um, and we hold our congregation in prayer uh, every week, and it's an honor to do that. And what's also wonderful is that we hold each other in prayer. The staff and, and the ministers, we're praying for each other's prayer requests. It's really uh, always the center of what we're doing is prayer. So you want to be willing to ask for spiritual support on your path. We need to recognize and use the support that's available to us. It's always here. It's all around us. It's available. Use it as it is there to help us to forge a new path. Joseph Campbell, who, who wrote about, all about the hero's journey, he wrote the book, The Hero Has a Thousand Faces, and he wrote this. You enter the forest at the darkest point where there is no path. Where there is a way or path, it's someone else's path. You are not on your own path. If you follow someone else's way, you are not going to realize your potential. So I encourage you to forge your own path, to find your own way, and to find the allies, the spiritual support to get you along on your journey with love and with peace and with faith. So I have a few affirmations uh, that we'll close with. Please repeat after me. I am one with all life. I am willing to ask for support on my path. I take my next step in faith. And so it is. So it is. Namaste. Thank you for watching this message today. I'd like to invite you to join us in person here on campus at Unity of Houston for Sunday morning or Wednesday evening services. If you can't be with us here on our campus, you can still join us live on Facebook or on our website, unityhouston.org, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Central.